Hello and good day. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Atul Luthra. I am a physician and diabetologist currently working at Fortis Hospital, Gurgaon, uh, where I head the Department of Lifestyle Diseases and Metabolic Disorders. Uh, friends, uh, in the last two or three decades, uh, there has been a remarkable change in the pattern of diseases that we encounter in our clinics. Uh, two or three decades back, the most common disorders used to be infections and malnutrition. This is what I call the petty criminals of yesterday. And today we have the global terrorists in the form of diabetes and heart disease. Incidentally, the driving force behind both diabetes as well as heart disease is overweight or obesity. Now the question arises, why are we getting overweight or obese? The major reason for the rising incidence of obesity and consequently diabetes and heart disease is our faulty eating pattern. So therefore, we shall be discussing today about certain basic facts and principles of diet in our day-to-day -day life as well as in the management of obesity, diabetes and heart disease. So we have two types of dietary components that is the macronutrients and the micronutrients. The macronutrients are the ones that give us the energy and we have three macronutrients the carbohydrates, the fats and the proteins. The micronutrients are those substances which we require in very small amounts and they are the vitamins, the minerals or trace elements and the antioxidants. So let us start with the macronutrients. And in macronutrients, carbohydrates. So, I must begin by telling you that every gram of carbohydrate that we take gives us 4 calories. So, if you take 10 grams of carbohydrate, you are taking 40 calories. Now, carbohydrates are the chief energy givers of our diet. Nearly 50 to 60 percent of our caloric requirement comes from the carbohydrates which we eat. Carbohydrates are of two types. One are what we call the simple or the refined carbs and the second which we call the complex carbs. The basic difference is in the content of fiber. Now in simple or refined carbs there is practically no fiber. So these foods generally when consumed cause a sudden rise in blood glucose levels whereas complex carbohydrates contain a high proportion of fiber and therefore when we eat complex carbs there is a gradual rise in blood glucose that is why in the management of diabetes it is recommended that the patient should take complex carbohydrates which are rich in fiber and these complex carbohydrates include the pulses, the whole cereals, the legumes, the salads, the sprouts and so on. The second component we talk of is the fat and fat is the most discussed portion of any dietary meeting or dietary discussion. Again, I may begin by telling you that each gram of fat gives you 9 calories. So nearly two and a half times of what one gram of carb would give. So a teaspoon of fat which contains 5 grams will give you almost 50 calories. Again fats are of three types depending upon the type of fatty acids they contain. So we have the saturated fats, we have the monounsaturated fats and we have the polyunsaturated fats. Let's talk about them one by one. The saturated fats are the richest in terms of their fatty acid content. Common saturated fats are desi, ghee, butter and cream. They are 
as far as possible to be avoided in our daily diets. The monounsaturated fats are less commonly used but are better than the saturated fats. Common examples are the olive oil, the mustard oil and the rice bran oil. And finally the polyunsaturated fats include the safola, the sunflower oil and the corn oil etc. So the although it is said that monounsaturated and polyunsaturated are less harmful than saturated fats, one must not overlook the fact that all oils contain the same amount of calories. So 5 grams or 10 grams of any oil, whether it is desi ghee or mustard oil or sunflower oil will give you the same amount of calories. The difference is in the content and nature of fatty acids. As far as the risk of heart disease is concerned, the maximum harm is caused by saturated fats. And among the saturated fats, there is a subtype called trans fats. Now what is a trans fat? Trans fat is the fat when a oil is repeatedly heated to the point that it gets burnt, some of those fats get converted into trans fats. And trans fats are what most often cause the clogging and hardening of the arteries which causes heart attack and paralytic strokes. So whether it is the sweets or the namkeens from a halwai or it is the, uh, the bakery products or cookies or pastries from a bakery, they all contain high amount of trans fats. The producers of such substances, why they use uh, trans fats? Because they have a long shelf life and they are more commercially viable. So, if you have to pick up a fat, please make sure you check the labeling that it does not contain any trans fat. The third component of the macronutrient is the proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of the body. They are what add on to the muscle. 80% of our muscles contain proteins and proteins are made up of substances which are called the amino acids. It is not the job of proteins to provide calories. The job of proteins is to build the muscle. The carbohydrates and fats, they provide the calories, but if there is a deficiency of carbohydrates and fats, like in a famine, or if somebody has a very poor appetite or a serious disease, he's not, he or she is not eating, then the muscles provide the calories and that is why there is loss of weight and thinning of the muscles. So proteins should be taken in plenty. Every human being should take at least one gram of protein per kg body weight irrespective of his or her age. So a 70 kg man or woman should take approximately 70 grams of protein in a day. Youngster may take 1.2. Elderly people may take 0.8, but on an average, a gram of protein is what we require per kg body weight on a daily basis. One important fact about the muscle protein is that when people go on a very strict diet control, but they don't exercise, so they not only lose their fat and reduce their sugar, but they also lose their muscle. Therefore, it is recommended that whenever you follow a strict diet plan, do exercise so that you don't lose your muscle. It is good to lose extra weight, the extra fat, but it is not good to lose your muscle mass. So now coming to the micronutrients, we have various vitamins. You all hear about vitamins. People keep taking vitamins. Each vitamin has a specific role. Vitamin A is good for the eyes, Vitamin D is good for the bones, Vitamin B complex is good for the nerves, for the immune system and then you have the trace elements or the minerals like chromium, zinc, selenium which you require in very very small amounts. You don't measure them 
you there is no recommended dose but the broad principle is that if you take a healthy meal which contains complex carbohydrates which has lot of pulses legumes salads and sprouts you are going to get enough of vitamins and minerals the reason is that all these trace elements come from the soil therefore try to choose food items which are derived from plants and not made in manufacturing plants thank you very much